Hello everyone, Dan here. I've got six new thumb tip ideas I just want to share with you. They're not fully blown routines, but little tricks and ideas you can expand and play with. And these are some little things I got excited about from a ring to a wallet to a secret way to get a thumb tip on to equivocate and just little ideas I think you'll enjoy with this jam session. So without further ado, let's get to some cool thumb tip ideas. So the first idea I'd like to get into is the ring to wallet and I thought it was a really really cool idea so we'll do it without a spectator for for the context. We got a ring and we can take it off normally we borrow one from a spectator this is an, one of my own personal rings I got from eBay. It's an eagle ring with uh, gold and different things to it. And let's have some fun with this ring. i get the ring, if I may. Show it one last time. Push it inside the hand. And it goes just like that. And I gave it a little tossing motion before the end because it jumps through the air to your pocket, sir. You may check. There's nothing there. Jumps back into the air. <laughs> Does a loop-de-loop -loop and jumps back in po your pocket again. But not only inside your pocket, actually inside your wallet. Can you check out your wallet? Or remove your wallet? If you may. And they checking around. They don't see it yet. And for the context, we'll use my wallet. If I may. And I want to do this very, very slowly and fairly. It's inside right behind the bills. Ooh, you're loaded. <laughs> right behind there. You can actually see this. Okay. Very slowly. Very, very slowly, so you can actually see this right from the center of your wallet. Out comes a ring. I believe this is yours, miss. In this case, you can check everything else out. Everything is fair and copacetic. Let me readjust that bill right there. You can close up the wallet, hand the wallet back out to them, and you're clean. That is the ring to wallet. So let's get into this little idea. There's little, little handlings that make it different from the built wallet that I released earlier in my Jam Sessions 10. Jam Sessions 10. So the difference is the handling of the ring. So we can borrow a spectator's ring and do this. All you need is a thumb tip. That's all you need for a setup and a spectator and a wallet, which you can all borrow. So all you need is a thumb tip. Gotta love it. So we have it on. Your dominant hand, in this case it's here. If you're right-handed, uh, just mirror me and you're fine. Okay? So we borrow a spectator's ring, or you can use your own ring, but you give it to spectators to examine, and they can check it out. It can be on the same hand as the thumb tip. It actually gives a little subtlety that your hands are ungimmicked. Uh, and then you hand it out to them to examine. They can check it, make sure it's not tricked, whatever. Just be careful because if it's a valuable ring, you know, you don't want to get it stolen. Know who you trust. So, we got the ring. We hand it to them. They see it's normal. Or let's assume it's a spectator's ring. We got it. And now we do the usual insertion that I've explained in many of my jam sessions. We put it inside. And I'll reveal it again. Put it inside. Pull back on the edge right here as, as I'm going inside here. Grab onto the thumb tip. And let the thumb tip go into the recessive hand as the dominant hand pulls back out the ring to show it again. So in action, it looks like this. And what we've done is display the ring twice to make sure it's extra fair while lo loading and setting up for the thumb tip. All discreetly revealed. But one last time. So we've gotten this action, we've done it, and one handle I want to mention is the when the ring actually goes inside, which I'll do in slow motion. So we got it, and we're right here, Gucci. So what we do is make sure the thumb is pushed and pressed like this against the ring. You want it to be here, so as the thumb goes inside and goes inserted with it, and the ring goes inside, you want to make sure it's easy to pull out so you have something to grip on. Otherwise it'll be hell killing getting out of the wallet. So. Go inside like this. Ring goes inside. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not sure. Thumb goes inside. Doesn't need to go fully inside, deep inside. It, and, and when it comes out, you can actually pull, pop the ring right out. Cool. So again, 
goes inside so you make it so that when you do have to pull it out again it just pops right on out that's how you get the ring in and out of the thumb tip I should also mention use a rubber thumb tip because the regular ones aren't as pliable and they aren't able to to adjust to the ring unless you're using a smaller ring anyways so let's go back to where we catch up here 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 the, the thumb subtlety push inside poke and you can do a little tossing gesture or better yet what's even better in this case would be to as you do this so do this 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 push inside poke and then from here you can get your hand and toss it towards a spectator assuming they have a wallet not or maybe a purse wallet it could be done with females wallets too but just toss it like so boom or just vanish it and then toss it whichever you prefer and now it's vanished you show gesture and you're clean when you have the thumb tip right here with the ring inside cool so then we go to a spectator and say you could play the gag as i did in the presentation it goes and jumps inside your pocket check it out it jumps back out of there as they're checking little gag jumps back inside and then it's inside the wallet no one believes you they take out their wallet they're checking or you could just ask for them to politely let them check it after they got bored of checking their own wallet then you can go inside and then you go deep inside so the wallet can cover the angles of the thumb tip just your first finger and thumb that is all you're allowed to use for the work and then you go inside and other fingers below holding the wallet and very cleanly pull out the ring wow right from the center of the wallet that is pretty dang cool you can hand it back out to them go back in steal off the thumb tip as you look at the wallet okay so you so again one last time thumb goes back in to re to reattach itself come back out fingers covering because you don't want to flash this okay and then you have to be uh, aware of the angles if i'm too casual like this i can be flashing the thumb tip you want to keep your angles covered so i know i might have flashed in the performance because the camera was low on angles so pull out close it on up hand out the wallet open gesture to make sure they don't think sleeving did anything weird nothing in your hands and then you're done and it's that simple that is the ring to wallet thank you so with the ring to wallet idea out of the way let's get on to our next idea which is Joshua J's cornered now this is an interesting idea in his presentation I'll just describe the trick I will not go into explanation of it but it was kind of complicated in handling the idea was that uh, you borrow someone's you had to go to someone's wallet like you take someone's wallet pull out a dollar bill which is already kind of it can play comically very well I guess but I would rather just not even touch it or they give me a dollar whichever so let's assume you get a dollar or whatever bill you have it signed you can rip off a corner vanish it and then have it reappear somewhere else back inside their wallet whatever and then you can show that the bill matches in a complicated format my thing was why not just use a thumb tip and simplify the whole dang thing and, and I'll use instead of bills because I don't feel like tearing bills apart we'll use the context of a playing card I don't actually I don't think in Joshua J's version it can be signed but we'll just assume and go along with it anyways I'm gonna just make some visible marks for a second uh, putting my TT aside I hand this is a, imagine this is a bill and I just go put a giant uh, is this an asterisk I don't know what this is hopefully you can see it on there maybe I'll put a little more squiggles just so you can see that it is good and a unique business card yes okay we're good there can so now what we do is we can freely tear off a corner so I'm going to tear off a corner proceed to do so and then you can ask the spectator as in Joshua Jay's presentation can you hold on to this okay you're the one who ripped it off not me and that's a little joke funny then you can fold it on up same as Joshua Jay's presentation but uh, I 
think maybe it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit less involved with the vanish, the way he did it. I could just fold it on up, or if you could even you could even do it with the signature facing outward, which is kind of cool, no switches. See the signature? It really is your card. Do uh, this little guy. Okay. Bam. Gone. And really is gone. Then we can go to the wallet, whatever the spectator's wallet is. And then reproduce it. Let's say right here. Goes deep inside. And you can reproduce that card. Right here. Okay. Check it out. Open it up. You see the signatures on there. You can sh uh, show the wallet. There you go. They can have it back. They open it up. It is their signed card. They can visibly see it because you you literally fold it in reverse. <laughs> what kind of handling allows for this? They can do the little uh, alignment and they see it as the exact same card. Booyah! I think this is the best version ever. And I love Joshua's J's version because it allowed for me to stand on the shoulder of giants and get, give you this version that you see right here. So without further ado, let's get into the um, updated Joshua's J's corner trick featured in J Noble's Otis Money DVD. Let's get into it. What I love about this handling or the ideas I have on the thumb tip is it's not purely limited to bills or tearing in bills and signing and doing it. Uh, again, I don't think in Joshua J's version you can have the bill signed, but in this version you really can. So easy with this guy. <laughs> so let's just say for the context we're using, and you can use in real performance people's money and do the whole thing, but let's just say for the context let's use your business card. Sounds good? Sounds good. You have the, and I'll put away my thumb tip for a second, and I'll actually give you, <laughs> to, to get it easily, you can put the pen away, or you can use a new thumb tip idea at the end of this video to be able to get retrieve it without worry. So that's exciting. Until then, let's, let's go for, um, I'm going to go for a couple stars. I'm going to do an X with a couple stars, just to show you that this is a unique card. Okay, they sign it however they want. I'm just making it... Clear this no duplicate. Coolio. So that is the card. You can put this one away and get the thumb tip. And I'll explain the other idea. I, I'll get into it later. I'm really excited about the other idea. So this is their card. And you say, let's let's tear it. There's no switches. You just really tear it. It's cool. And no reset. It's instant. Reset. Okay. You tear it right here. And then in Joshua J idea, I say, uh, they would say, or Joshua would say, can you hold on to the corner? And they do. Rip. And then you could say they ripped it, not you. Okay. So then we continue on with the handling. Here, we'll, we'll move on with it, don't worry. Uh, we'll fold it on up. And their signature is outward. That is so cool. <laughs> I don't know why I'm freaking out about this, but it's so cool. They're holding on to the torn corner piece, or it's on the table. You get this card, and we do the insertion that I've described many many times but I'll just overview it real fast or you know it was in the original I don't have to overview this you guys should know this already so we just do the the Rico's insertion slowly I'll just do it one flash e thing you should get used to this by now boom boom push inside boom boom okay not revealing it, but just doing it in performance because you guys should know this. It's such a great slide. Now I'll do an actual performance. Okay, we put it inside. Boom. 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 Done. So it is vanished. Vanished. And it concealed inside here. Go to a spectator's wallet and say, it's inside there. Can you check it out? If you want to, let them check it out first. They give up. And then you can do it, or if they're freely trusting and they give you the wallet, great. Just make sure it's a normal billfold wallet. It makes things a lot easier. Go inside, as in the previous handling we just described earlier. And then using your middle finger, sorry, your thumb and middle finger and the other fingers coalescing. It helps to gear the, centralize the thumb tip so you can pull out the object much easier. Aim it up so it's now flashing like this. Don't want to show the thumb tip. Up. 
and you come out with it and you can have this spectator open up they can see the signature and now they're just opening up to confirm it go back inside still out the thumb tip close the wallet on up hand it back to the person you can show your hands cleanly so it's not like you're stealing anything from this wallet they open it on up they see the signature they <laughs> which should be already obvious it's already their, their piece and then they match it up and then boom you're gucci it matches you are a badass and we're good next idea okay so what was the third idea <laughs> We're just jumping around fast on ideas. Oh, this is another one. Uh, I don't really want to do it because it's folding up. I'll just do it with the dollar bill, okay? You know what? You know what? I'll do it just this once, just for the magic community. I hate it, but I'll do it just for this once for the magic community. It's just an idea that you can play around with, and I'm not going to really go into performance of it, but it's just an idea you can play around with, okay? An idea is that you have like a $20 bill, 50, 10, 5, whatever. Actually, the higher the bill, the more crazier it seems. So if you have 100 and you want to play a gag on your friends with a really good gag, then try this one. So get 100 from your local bank and fold it on up. This will be a really good gag you'll like. Fold it on up, and so I do. So what I do is I do it in half, the the face inward, like we're doing a bill switch. Then we go up, fold it up like we're doing a bill switch. Half again with the this guy sticking out, the other part going inward, and then up. So what we see is we don't actually see any numbers or anything. It just folded up like this. Okay. It just makes it easier for the bill switch or whatever we use it for. And because we're only doing a retrieval, not a bill switch itself, it doesn't matter what type of thing you use, thumb tip you use. So I'm going to use a, a rubber one for context. Okay, so you have this $100 bill, oh my gosh, inside your thumb tip. <laughs> Can't believe we're doing this. And you're just chilling out with friends, whatever. You got it on, or you have it inside your pocket. This is inside your pocket. Eventually go inside and retrieve it. And you go up to a friend, hey, uh, and you go, hey, buddy, uh, can I get back the hundred dollars that's inside your wallet? I put inside your wallet earlier. And they go, what? No. And they go, yeah, I, there's there's a hundred dollars I snuck inside your wallet just for safekeeping because I, you know, your wallet's more safe than most people or whatever, whatever reason you want to make up. And they go, they don't believe you, they're not buying into it. No, seriously, if I may, and and you can just look around for it first. And then you casually like let them look around, everything's safe, and you do it very slowly. And you show good intent that you're not trying to steal from them. Then you actually do the same handling as we did earlier. Slowly pull it out. And you go, yeah, it looks... Here, hold on hold on to this for a second. Let me make sure there's no other money. They can hold on to your $100 bill for a second, or you could hold it in your mouth. That's another way. I don't know, with the coronavirus, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. You can have it sticking out of your pocket right here. If you have some object, you can hold it like a little hanky underneath. Or on the table. If you, I'm never even usually with the table, but put it right there. And go, yeah, is there any other money? No? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, buddy. And then you open it up. And just cash like you don't care. Yeah, cool. Thanks. And you put it away, and they are just freaking out. It's just like, what the? Why would he put $100 in my wallet? <laughs> It doesn't make logical sense, and yet that's why it's so great, because it doesn't make logical sense. Imagine you just pull money out of people's wallets whenever. A hundred dollar bill. It was inside my wallet the whole time? What? I thought that was a really cool idea. So that's, uh, that's idea number three. A hundred dollars in your friend's wallet. There you go. Another idea that we can also play with, that's just experimental, is the... Coffee equivocate. I call it a coffee equivocate. This is another idea you can play with. You have, and we're going to use because I don't have the, I don't drink coffee. And we need, let's see, let's we'll use this as different ones. So let's say you're at a, you're at a restaurant with friends, IHOP, Denny's, whatever. And you want to do something random and unique and you got a thumb tip and that's all. And they, press you for magic, or you know they're going to press you for magic eventually. 
So this is a really, really cool idea to do. So in this case, we have three different objects. I'm doing this for contrast, the face of the card for contrast. But let's assume you set up that you secretly went to the side, which is pulling out the idea directly. You go to the side and you get um, one of the sweet and lows, you rip it open, and you pour the sugar inside your tip, loading it on up. Then you put the tip on, and then you're all set. That is the prep you just do on the side. Maybe take a sweet and low, go to the bathroom, like you have to go to the bathroom, and then put like two sweet and lows loaded up inside your thumb tip, put the thumb tip on, and you're all set. Okay? It makes a little difference from just the vanishing and reappearing sugar that everyone knows how to do for basic thumb tip work. This makes it a little bit, little bit better. <clears throat> so the current situation is this. You've got a thumb tip with two packets of sweet and low inside. This is just an idea. Two sweet and lows. It's on here. And you got three different objects on the table. One could be a creamer. We're just imagining right now. One could be a creamer. Another could be a uh, the sweet and low itself which is the one right here, and then the third one can be sugar, or whatever. And it'll also be important for the taste too, which you'll see in a second, uh, or as spectators love to play with the routine. So, essentially we're going to be using Equivocate to force the sweet and low. And I've covered uh, Equivocate in another video, but we'll cover it briefly here. So, in the context, uh, here's the one we're going to force. This is a sweet and low, sugar, creamer. Okay. You say to the spectator, just point to any two you like. If they point like this, we can eliminate both, and then bam, you've got the sweet and low, you're done. Let's say they point to these two or these two, doesn't really matter, these two. Okay, then we'll eliminate this one. And so now you've got two left, the sweet and low, and the sugar in this case. And then you get in the uh, push one towards me situation, which John Armstrong is the one who forwarded that idea, or moved forward that idea in his Armstrong Magic series on LNL Publishing. He would say, here, uh, what I want you to do, and he, the forced card's right here, or the forced one, the sweet and low's right here, nudge one towards me. Simple as that. And so if they nudge this one towards me, you nudge this one towards me, and you left this one for yourself, great. We'll toss that one away. And then we've got, we use the sweet and low as the force. Okay? Now, in the case that, uh, the, let's say they offer this one, they nudge for this one towards me. So you nudge this one towards me, okay. And forget about that one, and you just toss it aside. You don't even have to say forget about that one. They, did, they nudge towards you, okay, that's a great. And you're putting all your focus into this one, the sweet and low, and you're done. And so, you know, you, you've got a triple equivocate. Okay? So three, you get down to one right here, and you say, I had a prediction you were going to choose sweet and low, okay, I just, I just had a feeling, I had a feeling, and this would be for non-magicians, mostly, <laughs> he, he go, check this out, uh, I don't know if I can do this, I'm going to grab it, I'm going to grab some of the sweet and low from the air, okay, give it a snap, and then, assuming you have the two packets of sweet and low in there, you can pour it on out, so hold it, hold it in your hand, and you pour the sweet and low into their hand, and they're freaking out. And what makes this interest, this version a little bit stronger is not only do you pour it out, because it would be the same as sugar, they can actually try it out for themselves. Don't know why they would, but they do it all the time. They try it out for themselves. Oh yeah, it does. it is sweet and low. Cool. And then they're freaking out over that effect, which is kind of hilarious that they got to uh, choose, choose the packet they wanted, and then sweet and low, you predicted that it was going to come out by pouring sweet and low out of your hand, which is a really cool effect. It's called the co coffee equivocate. Little ingredients for your coffee. Play around with that. I think you'll like the idea. And then we'll move on to the next idea. This next idea is kind of a, a little cheeky favorite of mine. It's a gag, but it's a great gag. Especially great during the, well, the current times we're in right now. <laughs> So you're feeling like all stuffy, and you're like, oh my nose, oh it's so stuffy, it feels weird, ah, just, hold, hold, hold on one second, here, here, hold on, you just get it, uh, hold, uh, it's not getting deep enough, hold on, hold on, I just, I need to get tight enough, and, oh, oh yeah, 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 this, that, that's how you do it, that, that is, yeah, my nose is clean, oh yeah. 
And that's the idea. It's, it's just a gag of a napkin up your nose. And it weirds spectators out, and at the same time you're unclean. It's just a weird, wacky idea that I just really, really like, and I wanted to share with everyone here today. So let's let's actually get into it. No cuts for this one. <laughs> um, we have the thumb tip, and then we have the um, piece of napkin. So here we go. Piece of napkin you want to do, tissue, whatever, I don't really care. And you're only going to need a piece of it. You don't even need the full thing. So, because the full thing, I don't think will fit in a thumb tip. It's it's tiny. Anyways, so, you know, like, especially it works if you have a cold, but then you soak up stock. You know what? You know what? Just play around with it. Just play around with it. I'll leave it up to your discretion. Tear off a piece of napkin. <laughs> and you just, like, you know, you're just getting around, like, here, and you saw, like, it's not getting deep enough. That's the idea or premise. It's not the napkin is getting deep enough. You can fold it up if you want to make it a little bit easier. You don't have to, though it does make it easier to get off the thumb tip. Get it here, do the Rico's insertion, pull it out, show it one last time, push it inside the thumb tip, and then poke one last time. But instead of doing this gesture, instead of doing that, so we are, let me go back. Let me go back, it's deep inside there, okay. So we've got the napkin. Got a napkin, fold it on up, right here. Wow, it's windy or raining, can't tell. Okay, so we push it inside, push it inside, poke, and then we come, instead of doing the hand gesture, what we do instead is we go, like we're just literally snorting it up. And you, if you want, you can pull back your sleeves, so you go, pull back your sleeves like this, like you're not doing, you know, sleeve work, which you're not, you know. Your thumb is covered behind your fingers, and uh, and you relax, and you can open up, showing the thumb tip pointing at them. Uh, and it's weird and creepy, and you get to see the the, the simulations that your napkin goes, goes up your nose. Why would you do that? That's illogical, but it's logical because it's cool, and you really want to clean your nose. So it's logical and illogical. Crazy idea, but I think it's 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 topical because of the times we're in. I hope you enjoy the idea. This is napkin up the nose. <laughs> and uh, the final idea, this is the number six idea. So, so far we've covered the ring to wallet, the uh, updated cornered version of Joshua J's Cornered, featured in his the Jade Noble Zaz Money DVD. We've covered the hundred dollars what, the $100 bill in the friend's wallet, or whatever amount, $20 bill in the friend's wallet. You can even have it signed to make sure it's yours. Like, I owe, this is Dan's money, or whatever. You could play around with that. Coffee equivocate, napkin up nose, and the final idea I want to cover today is an idea on how to get this thumb tip out of your pocket secretly. Or let's say you're starting clean, and you can't, like, going to your pocket would be seem weird, or people catch on. <clears throat> So one idea I came up with to be able to get into that position easily and naturally and logically, and no one will question you, not even magicians, is the lint wax idea. I'm not sure if this was ever published, but it's a great idea. You see, and it was based off of uh, Michael Rubenstein's idea where he did with the Spellbound, a little piece of silver lint. But in this idea, I take Rubenstein's idea uh, for a Spellbound idea, or, or producing, and what I do is I use it to retrieve it. Uh, so here's the context. Um, first we'll do standing and then work standing and then we'll do uh, the sitting version. Standing would be, uh, sorry I've got a little, hold on, got a little piece of wax or, or lint, I don't know what that is, uh, on there. And sorry about that. And then you've got the thumb tip on. Not perfectly on, but you got the thumb tip on. And it's by going and pulling off of your coat and putting it inside there that you're able to retrieve the thumb tip and no one will question it. It's a very natural thing. The other way is, uh, again, I'm starting off clean. Oh, there it is. Hold on. That's some weird. Ooh. Sorry about that. That was just, that's just weird. And then you go inside and you've got your thumb tip on. Uh, I got a different one. This is a king size. But because of the naturalness or just wanting to clean up, it was a weird, awkward moment. And no one thinks the wiser of it, then you get use that moment to 
you your thumb tip on, naturally no one's questioning you. And that could be used earlier to uh, the Joshua J's cornered or different ideas when you don't have to worry about the thumb tip. If you want to just be able to get it on whenever, use a lint wax idea. Just like, oh, got a little, you could transfer it hand to hand, just miming it. And just, I don't know what that is. And then just go in and steal it off. And that is a really, really, really invaluable idea. So you don't have to worry about the thumb tip at all. You just get and get it in and get it out whenever you need to. And this really, really helps open up the barriers and doors so you can be able to do all those routines. So I hope these six ideas were able to help you in some way or make you more creative on your own routines. My name is Dan Perez and hope you have a good one.